Welcome. This is Gary Salton, Chief of R&D and Creator of IOP Technology. This video reports on a stress test that assesses the reliability of IOP. Reliability is represented here by the regularity of the waves. Consistency is its essence. Reliability ensures that repeated measures of the same thing give the same result. Beyond this, reliability does not tell you much. However, inconsistency tells you a lot. In this example, the red line represents an alternative measurement of the same thing. Which is the right measure, red or blue? One of them is wrong. What poor reliability tells you is that you cannot trust the tool. Now there will be some variability in any measure of human attributes. No tool will be perfect. What you have to do is look for the most reliable tool you can find that meets your needs. You want one that you can trust. A classic way of testing reliability is the test-retest method. Just repeat the test and compare the results. If you get roughly the same answer, you know you are not trying to measure an attribute with a rubber ruler. An IOP visibility program we conducted created a natural reliability experiment. People were offered a free advanced leader, career, or emotional impact report. They could take the IOP survey online without any user codes or passwords. The report was sent to any email address they designated. They could use any name they wished. There was no checking. People could be entirely anonymous if they chose. An email invitation invited them to use the report access as they wished. They could retake it at will. They could also pass access along to colleagues, clients, or anyone else they chose. This introduced a random element into the sample. We had no control over the structure of the sample that was finally collected. A number of people chose to repeat the test. This created the opportunity for the natural test-retest experiment. The reasons for retesting established the stress test element of the experimental design. These reasons included things like they might not have liked their initial result, or they might believe that they could have answered some things differently, or they might just have been curious about the variability of the diagnostic classification. These are all motives for changing their initial diagnostic results. Most studies try to maintain constant conditions between test and retest. In other words, they try to minimize any negative bias. This experimental design created a bias against IOP reliability. This is why the study is titled a stress test. The design results in the worst possible IOP reliability measure. These are the average reliability scores posted by or sponsored by the publishers of traditional tools. It would be hard to find a source more biased toward reporting favorable reliability statistics. Accepting these publisher reported standards adds even more stress to the stress test. They are the highest numbers around. These publisher reported reliabilities average to about 60% repeatability. Anyone interested is encouraged to link to this site for detail on where these numbers came from. The sources, links, and detailed methods of calculation are spelled out in detail in this IOP research blog. Trying to recite them here would make for one boring video. In any event, the 60% standard will be used here. If IOP is able to meet or better the results posted by the publishers of traditional tools, it would be reasonable to judge it a reliable tool. If it is able to do this while working under the stress of a negatively biased sample, it would be reasonable to judge it a highly reliable tool, if not the most reliable tool available. The characteristics of the sample population tested matters in any assessment. It does not make much sense to apply rigorous standards to a non-representative sample. In this study, 1,458 different organizations were identified from their email suffixes. In addition, 1,800 people used 53 different generic email sites to run their reports. The sample from which the retests were drawn was both big and diverse. This means that it is unlikely that there is a substantial selection bias. 
These were not all college students, people from a single firm, or the like. The size, diversity, and randomness of the population from which the retest sample was drawn increases the confidence that can be placed in the results. So, what are the results? A total of 171 surveys from the population were identified as retests, a 2.7% retest rate. Most people chose not to retest, even though they could do so instantly, with ease, and without cost. It is reasonable to assume that the vast majority of people considered their IOP diagnosis to be reasonably consistent with their self-evaluation. This is something of a reliability measure in itself. People saw the IOP results as a reliable estimate of their approach as measured by their own internal standards. These graphs show that the 171 people choosing the retest had the same overall profile as the 6,000 plus people in the sample population. This suggests that there is nothing in IOPT itself that is driving the choice to retest. This implies that the stress test is free of a potential source of selection bias. So, what about the timing of the retest? It was short. It ranged from minutes to days, but mostly minutes. This meant that most people could remember their responses to the original test. This makes changing the results easy. Think about it. A motive for changing the results was present. Retaking the survey was easy. They knew the results of their initial test before retesting. They could retake the survey without either a time or cost penalty. And they were likely to remember their prior responses. Now that's a lot of stress by anybody's measure. So, exactly what was being measured? The answer is the dominant style. From a practitioner's viewpoint, a person's dominant style is crucial. It is the one that characterizes a person. It is the one that the practitioner is going to hear about in the debriefing. And it is likely to be the one that will be the focus of any intervention. Unfortunately, the publishers of traditional tools do not report dominant style reliability separately. Now, the importance of the dominant style is common knowledge. If it were a lot better than the reliability of the secondary styles, the publishers of the traditional tools would likely be celebrating it. They didn't. Therefore, the overall 60% standard we accepted could be overstated. The reliability of the dominant style of the traditional tools may be worse. We simply don't know. But, since this is a stress test, we'll pile this on with the rest of the stuff. So, let's do it. And here are the results. 74% of the retests came in with their original dominant style. This is about a 23% improvement over the 60% average posted by the traditional tools. And this was done under stress. Even facing a stress headwind of hurricane intensity, IOP substantially outperformed the traditional tools. And even that is not the end of the story. 26%, or over a quarter of the people who actually changed styles on retest, took the survey three or more times to do it. In total, these 18 determined people took a total of 48 surveys. 14 of these 18 people ultimately managed to change their dominant style results. If we remove these 14 people on the grounds of gross distortion, the reliability rate would jump from 74% to 81%. And this just removed the most egregious examples. There was still a lot of stress left among the people who were not removed. Here are the final results of IOP compared to the traditional survey tools. These results, posted under stress conditions, argue strongly for judging IOP as an extremely reliable instrument. If there is a better one, it has yet to make itself visible. This means that the scholar and practitioner can trust IOPT. The measurements it provides are reliable even under the most taxing of field conditions. It also means that you can rely on IOPT to give solid information on which to base large-scale initiatives and studies. Areas like corporate culture, mergers, acquisitions, and policy initiatives 
will be well grounded in stable and accurate facts. It is not likely that scholars and practitioners will encounter the adverse conditions of this stress test in field settings. Actual field experience is likely to be much better than even the high results reported here. Confidence in IOPT is well placed. Thank you for viewing this video. If you want more information on IOPT, you can go to our websites at IOPT.com or OEInstitute.org. Thank you again for your interest in IOP technology.